Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the BB66 Lite Micro Brushless FPB Quadcopter from Full Speed RC. It's available in four versions, DSMX, FR Sky, Fly Sky and a plug and play version and the one I've got is the FR Sky version. Inside the box we get in the quadcopter which as you can see is extremely small and comes already ready to fly. All you need to do is to bind your transmitter of course if you bought the bind and fly version and then it will be ready to go. In addition we get in two spare sets of propellers and an accessory bag with a GNB 260 mAh HV LiPo battery. In addition, we're getting a charger for the battery, two rubber bands to secure the battery, and you're also getting this micro USB adapter that will enable you to connect to the micro USB port of the board much easily. This quadcopter is using 0703 15,000 kV motors from Full Speed RC, an all in one 25 milliwatt FPD camera that supports OSD, which is a great feature. The board is an Omnibus F3 board and the ESC board is a 6 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 ESC controller. Because I've got the Bun and Flight FR Sky version, there is also a Nano receiver which is hiding over here. I'm going to test its range later in the video, probably it's not going to be 600 meters, but on the other hand this quadcopter is intended to be used in small areas, so probably not going to get too far, so this receiver should be more than enough. The weight of the quadcopter without its battery is 24.3 grams and if we add in the included battery the weight is 31.5 grams. So even though it doesn't include propeller guards this quadcopter probably is not going to pose a lot of threat if you fly it indoors but still as always you need to be careful you don't want to get it in somebody's face and take it into consideration when flying it. The thickness of the bottom plate is only one millimeter and of course it uses a uniplate bottom plate so I think maybe it would have been a good idea to include in the kit or add it as an option to get another bottom plate because it looks like it might break on a nasty crash. On the other hand because it's very light maybe it's not going to break that easily. Hopefully I'm not going to find out when I'm going to take it outdoors but we'll have to find out and see. In order to bind the FR Sky version to your Tyrannis, you will have to put the Tyrannis on D8 mode and then we'll have to press the bind button on the receiver which might be a little bit tricky without removing the top part so I'm quickly going to remove it. It might be possible because you need to access the button that is located over here but I don't want to ruin anything on this very delicate receiver so I'm just going to remove the top part. And now after removing the four plastic M2 nuts we can gently remove the top 3D printed part. You have to be very careful when handling this quadcopter. Everything is very small and you might damage things very, very easily. So let's remove it. And now you can see that the bind button is located here. So let's quickly bind it. So in order to bind it, put your Tyrannis on D8 mode, channels one to eight, hit bind, and then just connect the battery while pressing this button. Then hit exit and disconnect the battery. This receiver has an RSI feedback, so if you're going to connect the battery and the bind procedure was successful, you can see that you're gonna have here the RSSI of this receiver. Configuring the FPV camera is done by pressing this button over here. Short pressing it is going to change the channel. The top eight LED indicators indicate the channel. The left one is one and it goes all the way to the right to eight. And if you long press this button, it's going to change the frequency. You can see we have five LED indicators on the button. So in total, you have 40 channels. The left one is A, then B, E, F, and R. I'm going to set it on F. By the way, when you change the band, the channel resets to one. So I'm going to set it on F and I'm going to set the channel to seven. And as you can see, the FPV is working fine and you can see also there is an OSD overlay which is a great feature for a micro brushless quadcopter especially because there is no buzzer so we can monitor the voltage of the battery just by the OSD. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go through a bit of flight configuration and then take it for a test flight. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I think that if you are considering buying a ready to fly sub 70 millimeters brushless quadcopter, this is probably going to be your best choice. Even though I crashed it a few times, nothing happened to the propellers and they stayed in place. They didn't come out easily. In addition, the frame was intact and it comes already pre-tuned. So all you have to do is just plug the battery, bind it, and you're going to be ready to go. In terms of price, it costs about $100, so it's not cheap, but on the other hand, building it, it's not going to be cheaper. And I had lots of issues building the small quadcopters because things can go wrong pretty easily and I have a small graveyard of equipment trying to build these quadcopters. So overall, I don't think $100 for this ready-to-fly quadcopter is expensive. The only issue that I had is that this battery doesn't last for a long time and I'm not sure if it's powerful enough because when I flipped and rolled the quadcopter I did lose some attitude. I'm not sure if it's related to the battery or the motors are too weak but I have more batteries on the way and I'm going to test it out also with CNHL more powerful batteries and hopefully it's going to perform even better than it did. In terms of range, I didn't get too far, but I think you can fly this quadcopter for about 150 to 200 meters without any problems. The only thing that if you're gonna crash it in the grass in 200 meters, it's gonna be a little bit hard to find, especially because it doesn't have a buzzer. But if the battery is not going to be detached, you can use the RSSI feedback in order to find it. And it's also very nice to have RSSI in this micro receiver because first of all it's going to help you find the quadcopter if you crashed it and second of all you can always monitor the RSSI on your remote controller. So as always I thank you for watching my video I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the BB Light quadcopter feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.